Welcome to Workshop Wednesday. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we're sharing a fast DIY, a project follow-up, and an oops moment. And this week, tomorrow, we're posting our how to use a battery-powered chainsaw video. What? W what? That was the response. <laughs> we told friends that we I were told, making... <laughs> I told friends last night that, and they're like, you did what? You used a chainsaw? But they're scary. And we said, well, we read the manual, and it's not so scary. And uh, we'll share that video tomorrow. And on Monday, I shared a really big mess. I accidentally dropped a full glass bottle of green food coloring all over my tile floor. White tile. White tile. It was incredible. But anyway, that got me to thinking about all the different kinds of messes I've had to clean up over the years. And I asked on Facebook, um, I'm sharing my big mess now. I want you to come clean and share yours. And there were a lot of really interesting messes that people have cleaned up over the years. But I think my favorite was a friend who put in new flooring three years ago. She helps with costumes for high school and they use these glittery costumes. And she now, three years later, still has glitter in the seams of that, that new flooring. And the other one was uh, someone that dropped a raw egg and some sourdough starter on our kitchen floor. And I actually had that same sort of experience with a raw egg. When Steph's brother was a little toddler and he was learning to open the fridge, he took an egg out and he dropped it on this wicker trunk. Ugh, what a mess. Egg. Is this one of the worst things to clean up? But anyway, I don't know. For some reason, I knew to put salt on it, let that dry, then vacuum up, and then manually pick out the rest of the egg. But anyway, go to that post and share your biggest messes. Mm -hmm. and let's see. And how you got them clean. And how you got them cleaned. Yeah. I actually used crud cutter, and that worked. Um, I'm not sure what's going to work on the grout. I'm still in that process. We'll let you know in a we'll future episode. We'll let you episode. know, yes. <laughs> well, Mom, speaking of oops, we uh, we need to head to my house and talk about some of our oops moments from our Bend the Box project. Let's, let's, let's go. head over. We were at my house, in my office, and in front of the Bend the Box project. If you haven't gotten a chance to see that full project video, I will put a link to that below. But we're not talking about the success of this project. Today, we're going to talk about some of our oops moments. I think we should call those oops moments learning opportunities. That's true. And our first learning opportunity on the Bend the Box was when we actually brought it into the space, we were going to hang it on the wall with a French cleat. And a French cleat is basically a piece of wood that's cut at a 45 degree angle. One piece goes on the wall, one piece goes on the object. And we brought it in here and it stood just like this. There was no problem with it. And we thought, why are we hanging this on the wall? So we scrapped the French cleat idea. We ended up gluing the two pieces back together. Mm -hmm. And we also had created all of these glued up pieces of wood that we were gonna use for support. And I'm not sure how we were, what we were thinking when we did that, but that was scrapped. As well as feet, we were going to put feet on this to make it look more like a piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. And it was like, totally unnecessary. So we scrapped that and <laughs> just moved on. Yes. Uh, a couple other things. We were gonna use Craig pocket hole screws to attach the box together, but we realized our plywood was just too thin to make that a usable solution. So we ended up using glue and brad nails. Super simple. <laughs> Super simple. Also on the inside of the box, we were gonna use bungees, like four uh, bungees to hold the air mattress and the pillows in place. And then we realized the board that's gonna be used for support, that can also hold in the stuff. So it was scrap the bungees mm -hmm. and lastly this is a big box and we wanted yes. to paint it inside and out so we we thought oh what's a simple way of painting this let's set up our spray tent and let's <laughs> set up our sprayer that we've never actually used and put our uh, six-year-old paint in it which we didn't realize at the time it was that old and when we started spraying we realized it was spraying really slowly oh. and it's not getting very good coverage and the problem was our paint was too old and we didn't know that until we couldn't until spray you, anymore. Until you cleaned it out and I was like, yeah. oh, the sprays were really, really, really Yeah. So it's not, it wasn't the sprayer, it yeah. was the paint. So yeah, so if you're going to be using a sprayer, make sure you're using nice Fresh. Fresh paint that's not chunky. Uh, it did roll fine. We rolled this, mm -hmm. um, but that took us probably a day that it shouldn't have. I think the biggest thing I've taken away from this is, you know, sometimes projects aren't going to go to plan according to your plan. Yeah. And don't be afraid to change directions. Mm -hmm. And we ended up having to do that. There was nothing that we did that couldn't be repaired. Like we were able to fill in the pocket holes. We were able to glue up the French cleat to make it work. So. You know, go ahead and if you need to go in another direction, go ahead and go in another direction. And the biggest thing is we were able to laugh. There was a point oh, in this yeah. project where we were <laughs> where we were measuring something and my end was off and hers wasn't. And, just, and it was like, we just were laughing because it was like, it's, it's absurd. This it was, it was absurd because it was yeah. so simple and we had made it so hard. Yeah. And, 
So in the end, I think the project took about three weeks. If we were to do it again, it'd probably take us just a couple days yeah. because it's really straightforward mm -hmm. in the end. And that's what we actually shared in the full project video. We, is we the, shared the, the simple, simple version. Tutorial. <laughs> um, but we wanted to share on Workshop Wednesday with you guys. We wanted to share a little bit more um, of what the behind the scenes of what happened in this project. So hopefully you guys uh, like this kind of stuff. If you like learning about our oops moments from our project, let us know in the comments below because uh, we want to share it with you. We have that footage. We have yeah. hours and hours, hours of footage, of footage yes. so uh, that we can share. So let's head back to mom's house. Now I'm going to show you a fast DIY. It's springtime here in Florida and I'm just wanting to make floor arrangements and make over pots and things like that and just put some a bit of spring into my, my house. Now I've collected a variety of different kinds of pots over the years. You can find these little vintage pots at thrift stores and yard sales and things like that, but they're not always, you know, really what you want to put in your house. So you can easily transform terracotta pots, the ceramic pots, into something that's more appealing for your home. The best thing that I've found for starting to transform these different pots of terracotta and ceramics is this gesso. This is actually a product that artists use for priming their canvases, but I have found it's the best thing for putting on your first layer. It acts like a primer. So come along and I'll show you how we made this little pot. I'm going to be freehanding this design. So what I'm doing now is just marking off four quarters of the pot and I'm just drawing some straight lines. This will help me to keep my design I'm fairly even. We're going for a rustic look, so um, it doesn't matter if it's not quite even. Now, safety gear is a must. This terracotta pot will put off a lot of fine, very fine dust. I'm using a Dremel and I'm using a sanding disc. That's about a 60 grit. And I'm using it at a low speed because I really want to keep control of this. Just make it a very random, simple design. And those guidelines are helping me to keep that straight. We're just making a random design and, and all that fine dust is the reason why we wear all that safety gear. And I'm just adding a little bit of texture to the top of the pot. Make sure you wipe it really, really well, otherwise the paint will not stick. Now I'm going to cover the pot with a little bit of gesso. I'm just using this like a primer. Shake it up or stir it and pour it into an extra container. Otherwise, you'll end up getting that terracotta dust into the entire bottle. You don't want to ruin your gesso. Just put it on lightly. Again, this is like a primer, a base coat. It dries fairly quickly, but I'm also going to be using a heat gun to help speed up the process. Now I'm painting on the satin enamel. This is a gray. We're looking for a kind of a concrete looking and we're going to let that dry. Throw on a little bit of heat to help speed up the process. And you can see I didn't quite do it really heavily. That's fine. Now I'm going to add another thin coat of the gesso. And once that dry, we're going to sand it lightly with 320. And you can see that that design really pops. I'm adding some styrofoam and checking the fit of the succulent adding in some moss, sheet moss, and putting in the succulent and we are done. Now go out there and see what you can find and transform those pots, those terracotta pots and those planters into something that works for your house. Now we're going to head over to Steph's house and she's going to share a project follow-up. Welcome to Project Follow-Up. I am here in front of my hanging nightstand. I use this to charge my Apple Watch. I keep extra Apple Watch bands in this little tray we made. I have a clock, I have my music, and I love this. This is still one of my favorite projects that we've made. Uh, my favorite thing is it's made up with um, Live Edge. The bark is still on this piece of wood. And sometimes when you make stuff with Live Edge, the Live Edge can come off um, as the wood is kind of acclimated to the space and over time it can hap happen. But nothing's happened with this. This has lasted um, super well. We did All we did is put shellac on this. And I love that there's no legs and that it has this cool little sway to it. And um, one of the biggest things that people said, and I still remember it today, was you obviously don't have a cat or a dog because that table would never work um, with animals. Well, I now have an animal. I now have a dog. And I will say this actually is the perfect table for the space because uh, my dog will come in here and she'll play with her toys and things. And if there was legs on this table, she would hit those legs because she can get, she gets a little burst of energy. Um, but she doesn't, enter, it doesn't mess with her at all. So this has actually not been a problem for animals and it's just, I love it. I love the little sway it has. Nothing's ever fallen off. Um, it's, yeah, not, not been an issue. My nephews like it. They don't mess with it they don't like they do want to they do want to surf on it but um and it would hold them but i don't think that's a good principle to teach them to sit on tables and and hanging stuff so i haven't let them do that but it's held up well and um still one of my favorites so if you have any more questions about it let us know in the comments below that's our show for today last episode we asked you guys how long you've been diying for and let me say 
that we got so many responses. So many responses. They were so awesome to read. And Ma is not the oldest DIYer out there. I'm not, not by I, far. I, 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 that's exciting. <laughs> that I'm, is, I'm really yeah. glad. I, there are a lot of people continuing to DIY and make and make, make stuff. It's great. Make cool I love stuff. it. I love yes. it. Keeps you young. Um, one of our one of the comments we wanted to share today was from Brenda Jenkins on our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and she said, "I've been DIYing for about 56 years, crafting then sewing. My dad taught me how to use a sewing machine and how to read and use a sewing pattern. I frequently make messes, so I guess that makes me a maker. <laughs> that uh, you are a maker, Brenda. That is awesome. That's so cool to hear because my mom taught me to sew uh, years ago, and um, that's that's cool to hear that your dad taught you. I also tried to teach her how to drive a stick shift, but oh, Oh, no. No, we're not going to get in that story. Big fail. <laughs> Attempted. Attempted. It did not work. Yes. If you want to hear that story, let us know in yes. the comments below. Yes. It's a long one. I have a automatic car now. <laughs> Speaking of comments below, you can sign up for our newsletter, and there's a link there, and you'll get a newsletter once a week from us. Yes. And be sure to, did you say email newsletter? Email newsletter? It's yes, emails. it's an email. Yes. Yes. We don't mail it to you. No, we don't mail it. Yeah. Email. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and lastly, we want to remind you to join our Facebook page because on Mondays we will ask you guys a question like we did this week about your mess. mess. And uh, we want to hear from you and uh, see what, uh, get your opinion on what we should have on our next show. So thanks for joining us. <laughs> see you next time. Bye.